Back to home for your scientific conundrums. Dr Emily Grossman. <laughs> Here we are this week's little clock all from our viewers, Paula Ross from Brighton. Is it true we only use 10% of our brain? <laughs> Maybe some people know. Yes. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, not true. No, it's one of those myths. It's not actually true. They did uh, brain mapping studies where you look at how the brain's being used, and actually all of the brain has a function, and over the course of an average day, we do use 100% of it. There are right. still some mysteries as to the exact function of some parts, like to do with consciousness and memory. Those areas are not so well understood, but we do use all of it. I don't know how they work out what goes on where <laughs> up there. I mean, because it's one brain looking at another, but that's too simple, <laughs> isn't it? Right? Mike Beale from Gosport. Is it true that cats don't like to be stroked? Is purring a sign of anger? Now, this is very interesting, because I know lots of cats who seem to be like, like to be stroked, mm. but a study was done where they looked at the stress hormones of cats, and they found that although some of them do like the odd tickle, none of them actually enjoyed sort of sustained periods of stroking. And in fact, their stress hormones rose. Even if they tolerated the stroking, they got more stress. Well, now, this is, you see, my cat Spud, who is 17, who some of you may remember, black and white cat from Gardener's World, all those years ago, used to jump on my back when I was planting potatoes. He's still with us, and every morning, this morning included, he comes up, he, in, in and has his breakfast first, he sleeps in the potting shed, and he comes in, and has his breakfast, he comes up immediately afterwards, rubs against my leg, and if I don't stroke him vigorously down his back for at <laughs> At least one minute, he gets very cross and very vocal, and his tail's straight up in the air. He well, enjoys it. Absolutely. A sign that cats are happy is when their tail goes up in the air. That's true. And if they roll on their back and show you their tummy, it means they trust you and they do want to be stroked, but probably on their head, not on their tummy itself. And as for purring, yeah. the, um, yes, cats do purr when they're content, but they also purr when they're threatened or when they're scared. And um, Kind of like we laugh when we're happy, but also when we're embarrassed or even when we're angry. And um, some cats actually purr when they're giving birth, someone told me. Well, in Spud's case, that will be a bit tricky. Because <laughs> <laughs> for many years now, he's been cut out to be a bachelor. <laughs> uh, Aaron Gale from Southampton. How much energy does a microwave use relative to other cooking methods? Right, so when I heard this question, I thought, well, that's really interesting, because in theory... When you cook something, it shouldn't take different amounts of energy in different devices. It should be the same amount no matter how you cook it. Yeah. So I thought I'd do an experiment. Right. So I tried to boil a cup of water to make a cup of tea at home. And what I did is I tried doing it in my microwave, and yeah. I tried doing it in a kettle. So that's yeah. my microwave. Yeah. And uh, that's my kettle. And I tried doing it in the oven. Right. And I found that in my microwave, a cup of water took a, it was a 750 watt microwave, that's what it says on the front, which means it uses 750 packets of energy, joules, each second. Right. And it took about three minutes to boil a cup of water. Right. So if we times that by three minutes and by 60 seconds, yeah. we get about 130, well, it's 135,000 joules of energy. Uh, no, we're missing a knot. Yeah, yes, I was. Right. <laughs> so like Carol Vorderman on countdown, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. Please. Bristly. So, <laughs> You'd have a pee. Yes, go on. Go on. Um, OK, so in my kettle, yeah. it was a 3,000-watt kettle. Yeah. And that took just under a minute to boil. Yeah. So that's times 60. Yeah. And that gives us 180,000. So that's more energy. Than your microwave, Than right? your microwave. Yeah. Have I missed a knot again? No, it? you're all right. Yeah. Yes, you have. And, and, then you're on. <laughs> and then in my oven... Yeah. Amazingly, I left a, a cup's worth of water in the oven and yeah. it took over 30 minutes for it to boil. Good gracious. So we're talking over 30 minutes. My oven is uh, 3,200 watts. If we times that by at least 30 times 60, yeah. we got over 4 million joules of energy. So oh. what's... <laughs> Quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so your microwave's the best. So the microwave's definitely the best. And what it's to do with it is efficiency, because it's converting the greatest proportion of the electrical energy into heat energy in the water, because it absorbs those microwaves, rather than the, the energy getting wasted in yeah. the oven, heating up the well, air around it. See, you don't get this on Loose Women. <laughs> is there any questions you can't answer? Find out by sending yours into Alan at ITV.com. Tweet us at Titchmarsh Show or go to our Facebook page. A big thank you to our very clever scientist, Dr Emily Grossman. Thank you, Emily. <laughs>